uh, you go a step further. Uh, the Jews, not only did Hitler dislike the Jews, he actually believed that they were the source of all evil, that everything bad that had happened to Germany, the defeat in World War I, the uh, revolution of November 1918, the peace treaty of Versailles and its punishing uh, treatment of Germany, the inflation, the depression. Jews, he believed, were responsible for all of those bad things. And for that reason, they needed to be at the minimum expelled and ultimately, of course, killed. Okay, let's kind of make a segue to slavery. What do you guys know about slavery? Somebody raise their hand. What was slavery about? Yes, Brian. Well, it was when the Europeans came and they told the Africans that they were going somewhere that was, like, nice. But actually, they were tricking them into making them do work for them. Okay. Um, did my panel hear that? Did any, everybody hear that? Basically, Brian said that Europeans w came to Africans and said that they were going to take them somewhere nice, but they took them to a place where they were sold into slavery and they had to work hard and they were treated miserably. Dr. Crow, would you say that's a good summary? Well, that's a good start, certainly. Uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, jockeying for control of the slave trade in Africa, uh, even by uh, African uh, tribes, so that a lot of uh, slaves were really uh, captives who uh, were forced into slavery and then sold to European slave traders on the coast and then transported usually to the West Indies, sometimes directly to uh, North America. And of course, there's a tremendous number of slaves in uh, South America as well. Um, Dr. Williams, what would you add to that? What, was this, what sort of treatment did the slaves face once they were brought to America in particular? Yeah, well, I think it's really important to, to track their treatment starting from the point of captivity in Africa. And I mean, their diets changed. Many, many people died on the way to the coast. And then, of course, there's the Middle Passage uh, when thousands of, of um, now enslaved people would be packed into ships um, to be taken. Um, as Dr. Crow said, most were taken to South America and the Caribbean, by far more than 90% and about 6% were taken to America um, and about 2% to Europe. Um, treatment varied depending on where people lived. So people who worked on sugarcane plantations, um, for instance in Jamaica, never reproduced themselves, which means that they never lived long enough really to produce enough children to replace them, which is sort of the normal course of events. Um, they would just work to death. And for, for some time in America, that was also the case, that um, there was this constant flow of Africans into America, and so you could just, you could just work people. But um, people in America worked first in tobacco in Virginia. Um, so what Brian said about being forced to work, I think that's kind of the core of what slavery was about, that um, it was an economic institution first and foremost. Uh, people worked in tobacco, corn, cotton, rice, producing um, the products that would build the wealth of what became the United States. So Dante, given the fact that there, from what Dr. Williams said, there were 90% of slaves sent to the Caribbean and South America, why a documentary called Slavery, The Making of America? Well, in this, in t in this series, one of the things that we wanted to do was to dispel and deconstruct many of the myths that are associated with slavery. Uh, quite often, the common image of enslaved people is of Africans and African Americans in the cotton fields in the South. But the fact of the matter is, is that slavery did exist in the North. The fact of the matter is, is that many of the enslaved were not passive victims, but they were actually proactive freedom fighters. And um, another thing that we wanted to do with this series is to give viewers a full understanding of the strength, the humanity, and the dignity of enslaved people. Mm. And you said that, that many slaves were proactive freedom fighters. Absolutely. Why is that not really the depiction of slaves in well, general in America? 
Well, I think that one reason is because before this new scholarship, we were, had access to a lot of new scholarship uh, from people like Peter Wood and Ira Berlin, and they were adventurous enough and were, had the courage to seek the information and tell the story of slavery from the point of view of the enslaved. And by telling it from that point of view, it changes the perception. Previously, much of the scholarship was based on records that might have been kept by the slave owner, records that might have been kept at the county courthouse or whatever, but it did not include the perspective of the enslaved. And this new scholarship allows us to do that. Right. Dr. Solanus, any parallels between what Dante is saying and what actually happened in the Holocaust and at Auschwitz? Yes, indeed. Surprisingly enough, the, you know, the same kind of myth uh, is applied to the victimization of the Jews in the Holocaust. Uh, the myth being that Jews were led uh, like lambs to the slaughter, not resisting at all. Uh, that's a picture that uh, has now been pretty well punctured. Uh, we have all kinds of evidence of all kinds of resistance. One of the episodes, I forget which one, of the Auschwitz documentary uh, at least uh, has a short segment on the uh, uprising in the death camp at Sobibor. Uh, there was also an uprising in Treblinka. Sobibor and Treblinka were closed down after these kinds of uprisings. There's the extraordinary and heroic Warsaw ghetto uprising of uh, April 1943. There are many examples of Jewish partisans uh, in, in the East, and so uh, the question really is why the th where were these myths born and what reason for that? That's a very difficult question. Mm -hmm. Doc, uh, Mr. Hoffman, any comments on your part since you lived through it? Uh, did you witness uh, uprisings or any resistance that you can share with us? Not, not really. I didn't know that I witnessed it, but there was always the feeling that parents were protecting their children and in order to do so, they could not commit any overt act against the, the, the reigning power. The, the, the Nazis were so firmly entrenched, they had all the weapons, and uh, it was just too much for risk to take. Got him. Let me go back to our audience and get you guys back in the conversation. Um, Sarah, why don't you ask one of the questions that you came up with? Um. I had, did Hitler have any Jewish relatives, and if so, did he send them to the death camps also? Interesting question, Dr. Salinas. Uh, I do workshops around North Carolina for high school teachers, middle school teachers, and so on. That's the most frequently asked question, mm. did, did Hitler have Jewish relatives? Uh, the answer is a great big N-O, no. Uh, it's another one of those, I, I wonder what the reason for that widespread uh, uh, belief is. Uh, the truth of the matter is it stems from the fact that Hitler's uh, grandmother gave birth to his father illegitimately. And the rumor was that his grandmother had been a uh, maid in a Jewish household in Graz, Austria. Uh, there in a Frankenberger family. Investigations have shown that there never was a Frankenberger family in Graz. There's no evidence that his grandmother ever was there uh, and, uh, and all of that. So, uh, no. Well, I know there is, we have Brittany in our audience. Is it Brittany Yeager? Are you Brittany Yeager? I'm sorry. Well, we have another Brittany who um, submitted a question that basically kind of piggybacks off of uh, what Sarah asked, and that's why did H Hitler hate the Jews so much that he wanted them all, even the children and the disabled, to be murdered? Well, that's, uh, I teach a course on the Holocaust and I spend three weeks. I don't have three weeks here, do I? Uh, <laughs> well, and you don't have, you, you, do you, don't have you, don't, you don't have three weeks. Uh, ultimately, there is in, in the history of the West, Western culture, uh, a long tradition of resentment, uh, myths of resentment against Jews, the belief that they have had special power sometimes for evil, 
had special control, and so on. The reasons for that I can't go into here, but it's pretty clear, it's obvious, I think, that there is really nothing to those rumors. It's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult thing uh, to, uh, to explain. That's why it takes me three weeks in class. Mm -hmm. But uh, the point is that Hitler was really nurtured in a climate or of racism. And uh, that racism of the late 19th century into that climate into which he was born gave him an excuse and gave the Nazis an excuse for their own failures and for their own, fail and for their own failings and the failings of their country uh, and, that the, and the problems that they faced. Ultimately, I think at the bottom line, uh, they were the most convenient scapegoats. There weren't very many Jews. Uh, they didn't have nearly the powers, of course, that Hitler ascribed to them, but it was a convenient way of blaming someone else for your own shortcomings and your own problems. And uh, I think that within that framework, you have to place any kind of understanding of this question. Thank you. Giovanni, I remember that you have a question about, uh, that draws parallels between the Holocaust and slavery, if you'd like to ask it. Hold on, we have a mic. Do you remember that question, Giovanni? Yes, I wanted to know what classified a Jew as a Jew in the Holocaust and what classified a slave in slavery. All right. Um, Mr. Hoffman, why don't you start? Well, uh, in the Holocaust era, they, were, they became very specific. The Nuremberg Laws specifically told you who was a Jew. And it, it really comes down to saying that if one, one of your grandparents was Jewish, that made you a Jew, regardless of whatever happened. Uh, and uh, the uh, Nuremberg Laws, uh, what, what, what happened in Germany was that the persecution was directed first at people who were in the civil service, and subsequently it, it encompassed practically every individual there was. Nobody. Nobody escaped. Yeah. I might add that uh, one of the, the way you could prove that you were not a Jew was to have the baptismal certificates of your four grandparents. If you could find those, the baptismal certificates meant you had been baptized, you were a Christian. Uh, if you couldn't do that, although Hitler said that it was really a race, there is no such thing as a Jewish race, but that doesn't stop Hitler from making that claim. Right. And Dr. Crow, what distinguished or what, what categorized a slave? A slave? Well, it was strictly race-based, and so if you had African ancestry, uh, you were subject to slavery. And, and uh, when North Carolina was settled uh, in the 17th century, uh, original documents uh, uh, organizing the colony made that clear that uh, anyone who was uh, in those terms, uh, there were, in those days the term Negro was used, uh, you were considered a slave. And so uh, that persisted really uh, right through to the Civil War, and even though people of mixed ancestry uh, were uh, growing in population numbers uh, up to the Civil War and beyond, uh, generally uh, one would have had to either uh, get their freedom or to pass as white uh, to escape slavery. Okay, thanks. I know we have some more call, I mean, I'm sorry, some more questions from the audience, but we have a caller, uh, Zerdell from Brunswick, you're on the line. Hello? Yes. My question was, this is the 21st century, and the difference that I see between the Holocaust and slavery is that those people in slavery, which were African people, they're still being discriminated today in the 21st century. The Jews are not. And who knows who a Jew is this day and time in the 21st century? And no one has not explained to me why slavery occurred. Okay, thank you, caller, for your question. Uh, Dr. Williams, do you want to start off with us on that? Um, yeah, there, there are a couple of questions in there. Um, I, I agree with her that African Americans do face a great deal of discrimination in this country, and I'll, I'll probably leave it to somebody with more specifics to talk about discrimination against Jews, not just in America, but across the world. But um, I think one of the, the most dangerous things that happened during slavery in America was that racism grew up beside slavery. And I think 
Race affected who would become enslaved in the very first place. And when Europeans went to Africa, they saw people who looked different from them. They didn't enslave other white people from anywhere else at that point in time.